So I want to preface this discussion by saying that we are in the middle of a heated Democratic Party primary. And I'm saying that we are in the middle of a primary because there are some individuals that want us to think that it's over. That the winner has already been selected, we've chosen the nominee collectively, and now it's time to move on and defeat Donald Trump. But I am here to say that's not going to happen. Nobody has cast a vote yet, not a single voter has caucused for or voted for a candidate, but yet pundits are patronizingly telling Bernie Sanders supporters at least that it's over. And if we want to win, then we should just settle for Elizabeth Warren already and accept that she's the best that we're going to be able to get. Well, I say to hell with that because nobody's telling Pete Buttigieg's supporters to get behind Joe Biden if they want a centrist to win. Nobody is telling Amy Klobuchar's five supporters that they should back Kamala Harris if they truly want a centrist woman to win. But Bernie Sanders supporters, for whatever reason, were always the ones who are told, even before anyone has voted, that we've lost and we need to just accept that reality and support what we get. But we're not going to do that because this is a primary. Making the case for our candidate is not an attack inherently. It's all part of the process. And guess what? When we have a candidate like Bernie Sanders, who is better than every other candidate, including Elizabeth Warren, in almost every conceivable way, then we would be idiots to concede this early. Not only is Bernie Sanders more progressive than Elizabeth Warren when it comes to numerous policies like student loan and medical debt cancellation and foreign policy, but strategically he actually has a plan to galvanize Americans to actually get the policies that he wants implemented codified into law by being the organizer in chief. And that matters if you actually want to pressure lawmakers to pass very bold progressive policies. So Bernie Sanders is the best candidate for the left. If you want social democracy, if you want Medicare for all, I'm sorry, but Bernie Sanders is better than Elizabeth Warren. In fact, he's such a good candidate that I don't know that we're ever going to get a candidate with his record again in our lifetimes. So I'm going to take the time now to advocate for Bernie Sanders. He is better than Elizabeth Warren. But the minute polls start to go south for Bernie Sanders, when we start to see some trends change, then we're told that we should just fall in line and take what we get. But when polls don't look good for us, we do the opposite. We don't surrender. That means we fight harder. And the reason why I say that we fight harder is because we have reasons to, as Bernie Sanders supporters, fight harder because we can still win this. In fact, Bernie Sanders is in the top three. It's not over. So consider this poll from Monmouth University. Interestingly enough, when it comes to the issue of Medicare for all single payer, quote, among voters who want a single payer plan, 40% back Warren, 24% back Sanders, 17% back Biden, and 2% back Buttigieg. Now, I don't know how high voters rank Medicare for all, um, assuming that it's one of their main issues, if not their main issue. Well, first of all, 59% of Democratic Party primary voters who support Medicare for all, that's their number one option when it comes to healthcare reform, they don't support Bernie Sanders. Only 24%, one in four, support Bernie Sanders. 40% support Warren, which tells us that a lot of Democratic Party primary voters are incredibly misinformed. They think that Elizabeth Warren just citing her support for Medicare for All is enough. And 17% and another 2% think that Biden and Buttigieg actually support single-payer. So what this tells us is that we haven't been doing enough to effectively make the case for Bernie Sanders, because healthcare is the number one issue for a lot of voters. And if they truly know that he's the strongest when it comes to Medicare for all single payer, that is how we eat into Elizabeth Warren's lead here. That's how we get voters from Biden and Warren to jump ship and go towards Bernie Sanders. It's because they just don't know that Bernie is the best when it comes to Medicare for all. Bernie has been fighting for this issue for decades. Biden does not support Medicare for all. Buttigieg does not support Medicare for all. Elizabeth Warren says she supports Medicare for all. But there's been enough red flags to where we can still make that case effectively and get people who support single payer to back Bernie. Now, the reason why I say this is because for months now, I have been sounding the alarm. If you look at my YouTube videos on this issue, I've talked about how Elizabeth Warren has been showing signs that she's getting cold feet about Medicare for all. How her I have a plan for that message conspicuously excluded health care up until recently. 
And last week, I went over statements that she's made recently that contradict her supposed support for Medicare for All. And these are things that we need to bring up as Bernie Sanders supporters. And I will link you to all of those videos that I did down below. Because if that many people who are voting in this Democratic Party primary support single payer and they're not backing Bernie Sanders, assuming it's one of their main issues, then they are literally voting against their own interest if they're not supporting Bernie Sanders. So that tells me that we haven't been effective enough at communicating this to voters and Bernie Sanders obviously hasn't as well because a lot of people just assume, well, you know what? I support single payer. Elizabeth Warren is the candidate because she also says she backs it. But in actuality, Elizabeth Warren has been wishy-washy on this issue, not just in 2019, but she's always been fairly wishy-washy when it comes to single-payer Medicare for all. And voters just don't know about that. But I'm here to help you and educate you and let you know that if you support Medicare for all, Elizabeth Warren isn't the candidate that you want to be backing. It's Bernie Sanders. Now, unlike other candidates, to her credit, actually, Elizabeth Warren has supported single-payer before other Democrats. But she's always been fairly wishy-washy on this issue. And this is pointed out by Holly Otterbein in an article for Politico, where she writes, Seven years before Elizabeth Warren said, I'm with Bernie on Medicare for All, she was campaigning for the Senate and didn't want to talk about single-payer health care. Running a tough race against Republican incumbent Scott Brown, the first-time candidate repeatedly distanced herself from the idea. In one interview, she was grilled by New England cable news host Jim Broad. He wanted to know if she'd support single-payer if she were the Tsarina. In other words, if politics weren't an obstacle. I think right now, what we have to do, I'm serious about this, I think you've got to stay with what's possible, Warren said, nodding to the recently passed Affordable Care Act. And I think what we're doing, and look at the dust up around this, we really need to consolidate our gains around what we've got on the table. Warren's refusal to embrace single payer during that campaign came four years after she co-wrote an essay that called it the most obvious solution to the nation's healthcare woes, though perhaps politically unacceptable. Warren's record on Medicare for All has drawn scrutiny from some single-payer advocates. Many activists trust that she is fully on board with the policy and would push for it in the White House as strongly as Sanders, according to a survey of nearly 20 people and organizations that support Medicare for All. But some, including even Warren's allies, are less certain. We know that if Elizabeth Warren is elected president, we're going to have to work hard to make sure she prioritizes is it appropriately, said Sal Rosselli, president of the National Union of Healthcare Workers, which has endorsed both Sanders and Warren. We know that Bernie Sanders will because of history. Now, let me just say to that last point there at the dual endorsement, if you support Medicare for all and you know that you're going to have to push Elizabeth Warren to prioritize it, why wouldn't you just support Bernie Sanders? I mean, things like this, it just, it doesn't make sense to me. But what does this tells me deep down is that Elizabeth Warren, she knows that single-payer Medicare for all is the correct policy. It's just a matter of whether or not she thinks it's politically expedient to pursue that policy. So let's look at her history and contrast that with Bernie Sanders. Bernie has had one position consistently, single-payer Medicare for all. Elizabeth Warren, she supported single-payer before a lot of other Democrats, to her credit, but then she ran for the Senate and then flipped. But then in 2017, she supported Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All bill. And then in 2019, she announced that she's running for president and she kind of started to waver on it. Then she endorsed it again at a debate. And then she endorsed it again at the following debate. And now she's starting to waver on it. And by the time she gets to the White House, who knows what her position will be. But what we do know is that if Elizabeth Warren is elected, there will be uncertainty with regard to the healthcare reform that she pushes. So we could get Medicare for all if Elizabeth Warren is president, but let's be honest, I don't think that's going to happen. And if it does, it will be with us pushing her. So if you support Medicare for all, if you're one of the 40% of Democrats who support single payer health care, but you're opting for Elizabeth Warren as your number one choice, this is what you need to know about. This is what Sanders supporters should be educating people about. Because Elizabeth Warren, there's just so many red flags that there's not as much trust there when it comes to Medicare for all. To where if this is your number one issue, then there's no question about it. There's no doubts. If you support Bernie, we know that win or lose, he'll at least fight. For Medicare for all. And the reason why Elizabeth Warren, I think, has won over a lot of, you know, elites, establishment Democrats is because they know that if Bernie Sanders is elected, you know, 
He's saying Medicare for all, and he's going to crack skulls to make sure that happens. Whereas Elizabeth Warren is saying, you know what? I'm going to bring everyone together. We're all going to hash it out, and I'm going to advocate, advocate for Medicare for all, but this isn't a contest. And if somebody else proposes a bill that can be passed more easily, that's more politically expedient, we're going to go with that instead. So the reason why I say this, it's not just due to speculation, because people who know Elizabeth Warren, people who worked with her, Harry Reid, for example, is also saying, yeah, I don't really believe that she supports Medicare for All either. She's not really in love with it. This is what he said in an interview on CNN with David Axelrod. There is a concern uh, as well that's expressed by some establishment Democrats that she is uh, too far left. I think that that's, uh, let's just wait. For example, Medicare for All, I asked me, how do you feel about that? I said, I think what we need to do first is Let's make sure Obamacare is strengthened again. Mm -hmm. Republicans have done everything they can to hurt it. Let's strengthen it. We almost got the public option the first time. That's as good as Medicare for all anyway. And so That's not what she's saying, though. Well, but I think you give her some time. I think that she's not in love with that. I think she, you'll wait and see how that all turns out. So you think she's more pragmatic than Oh, I know she's pragmatic. Just wait. So what that should tell you is that Harry Reid is an idiot, first of all. <laughs> He is so corrupt. He's basically like a mafia boss in Nevada. And if you want to run for Congress in Nevada, then you have to kiss Harry Reid's ring. So let's just let's point that out. And on top of that, he's saying, you know, in his view, strengthening Obamacare should be a priority. That doesn't even make sense. That's just a distraction. He also says we almost got a public option the first time. No, you didn't. Obama didn't even push for it. And he said that a public option is as good as Medicare for all. No, because it's not free at the point of service, meaning if you don't have money, you don't get health care, which means you could die in this country. If you're homeless, you have to enroll in a public option, right? If you're poor, you still have to enroll in a public option. And what these private insurance companies will do is push everyone who's sick onto the public plan and they will only offer insurance to the healthy. But if you have single payer, then everyone is in one risk pool, which overall reduces the costs of the overall system. It cuts down on bureaucracy, right? So what Harry Reid is saying there, completely idiotic, but there is a grain of truth to what he says about Elizabeth Warren, I think. When it comes to Medicare for All and Elizabeth Warren, he says, quote, give her some time. I think that she's not in love with it. Exactly. The writing's on the wall. There's a lot of red flags with Elizabeth Warren. If you support Medicare for All single payer, Elizabeth Warren is not your candidate. It's Bernie Sanders. And during a primary, I shouldn't be fearful that I'm going to be smeared as a sexist Bernie bro for pointing that out. This is a primary, right? This is the time when we make our case and I tell you why the candidate I support is better than your candidate. And, you know, Bernie Sanders has a record that is unlike any other candidate. He has a record that goes back decades where he is fighting for civil rights, LGBTQ rights, Medicare for all single payer. He's been consistent here. And if we elect him, we'll know where he stands. Whereas with Elizabeth Warren, there's enough red flags to where that's going to be an open question. Who knows what we'll get if she's in office. Even if Bernie Sanders is elected, we don't necessarily know that Medicare for all will become the law of the land because... He's going to have to fight for it, and I know he's going to fight for it, which matters, but when it comes to Elizabeth Warren, if there's any doubts that she's going to fight for it really hard, then that means we're probably not going to get Medicare for all. If she's already showing signs that she's really willing to concede and waver, we're probably not going to get Medicare for all, right? So we need to communicate this to voters. Lots of people who are voting in this primary support Medicare for all. And the way that we and the way that Bernie Sanders team differentiates himself from Elizabeth Warren is by stressing that he's the one candidate who has remained committed to Medicare for all and only Medicare for all for decades. Girly Mike Fettuccini needs your support on Patreon. What a loser. Visit patreon.com slash humanist report to support the low ratings humanist report. Sad. My views are much higher. <laughs>